Hey y'all, welcome to or welcome back to Dave's Techway, whichever the situation may be. In today's video, we're going to be doing an unboxing, overview, review, whatever you want to call this thing. We got a Fractor Design Focus G case. I'm going to kind of open it up, see what all comes in with the package. We're going to go over the specs of the case. And by the time I, by the end of this video, I'm going to have a build done in it. And I'm going to give you my final thoughts and uh, my opinion on if it's actually worth the $50, $50 case. It's a little over 50 bucks. It's right around the $50 price range. But stay tuned and uh, we'll see what my final thoughts is on this case. Like I said in the intro, in this video we're going to be taking a look at the Fractal Design Focus G case. It's kind of an unboxing and overview. Uh, we're going to start out with the specs on the case. Uh, it comes in multiple colors. It's got a large side panel window. We got two, three and a half, or two and a half inch drive capacity. We got two and a half drive cap, 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 cap. and we also have a dedicated two and a half inch drive capability. We have dedicated five and a quarter inch bays on this case with brackets. There's two of those. That's another reason why I chose this case. Uh, expansion slots, we got seven. Motherboard compa compatibility is ATX, MATX, and ITX. Power supply type is ATX. Total fan mounts is six. Front fan is two 120s or two 140s. Two silent series LL120 LED fans are included in the front. The top fan is a two, you can fit two 120s or two 140s. You got a rear fan that will fit a 120. Uh, bottom fan, you can fit a 120. There's no side fans in it. Dust filters, top fans, bottom fans, PSU, front fans. That's where your dust filter is in the case. Uh, front radiator support is a 120 or 240, a 140 or 280. Limitations 280 requires that the bottom two and a half inch, two and a quarter inch slot is unused. So you can't use the bottom uh, external bay on if you want to put a 280 in. Top radiator is 240, uh, rear radiator is 120, max width of 120. Power supply depth limitations is a max of 230 millimeters. You got uh, CPU cooler height is 165 millimeters. Cable routing is 18 to 25 millimeter spacing. That's behind the motherboard tray. Cable routing grommets, there's none of those. Velcro straps, there's none of those. Padlock and Kingston lock support, yes, it does have that. Uh, captive thumb screws, both side panels. So they come with uh, captive thumb screws. So when you take off side panels, you got, uh, they'll stay in there. Dimensions of the case is 205 by 444 by 464 millimeters. The volume is 39.8 liters and the weight is 4.5 kilograms. So that's the specs of it. And apparently guys, all these years I've been building computers, someone out there says that, I'm, that, I, that I take my boxes out and my cases out of the boxes the wrong way. So, um, I'm going to try their way and I'm going to see if it's any better for unboxing. They say to cut the tape on the bottom of the box and lift the box off of it instead of going through the top. Well, let's see how that works out for me. I always like being able to save time and the convenience. If it is easier to do it this way, I'll start doing it this way all the time. Okay, then you flip it over, just like so. And pull the box off. The box is empty, nothing else in there. Okay, take the styrofoam packaging off. Open up the bag here on the bottom. Well, uh, we got some documentation here, the user guide. And yeah, we'll lay that over there for right now. 
pull the bag off of it. Alright. Looking at the front of it, it looks like we have some kind of mesh here on the front of it with your two, two and a quarter, five, uh, yeah, with two five and a quarter inch base. I'm assuming this thing pops off like most of them, yep. Just pop it right off there. You got the two 120s that's included. The two 120 fans is included with the case. Looks like pretty good fans, not bad. They are LED, I think, I believe this one's got blue LEDs in it. You don't have no bracket here at the top to remove for whenever you put in a five and a quarter inch bay, which a lot of people think these things is a waste, but I still have my card reader, so I need a five and a, five and a quarter inch bay for my card reader. Instead of spending the money and getting one that runs off a of USB 3, I'm gonna go ahead and use the same one I've got. Front panel, we got a reset power. Got a hard drive activity, headphones, microphone, USB 2 and USB 3. And up here at the top you have two places for 120s or 140s. Um, it looks like there is some filtration to them. Looks like there's a filter inside. We'll take a closer look at that when we get inside. On this side, we do have acrylic side panel, which isn't going to be my personal rig. I ain't too concerned with the side panel and whatnot. This is going to be against the wall. Um, here in the back, you got your standard power supply mount that uh, your power supply slides in from the from the side and comes back on the back of it. There's your seven experiences slots. That's nice for fifty dollars, fifty a little over fifty dollar case. They actually have the dust covers back here where you can replace them. That's pretty nice. You don't see that much in these cheap cases. There's your cutout for your 120 fan. There's your I.O. shield cutout. The back, the back panel of it. You got uh, a little bit of a raised area for your cable to help with the cable management, but not much. It's just your plain black case. Black, back, yeah, black side panel. I'm not too happy about the filter on the bottom. I mean, it does have filtration for your 120 or your power supply, but it is one of them, you know, I'd rather see the kind that's got got the housing to it and it slides out instead of the kind you gotta literally flip your machine on the side or on its back to fold out to take the ventilation but at least it does have some ventilation it looks like it's got pretty good pretty good clearance as far as the feet goes i mean it ain't i don't know you got maybe a half of an inch quarter of an inch half of an inch there so that ain't too bad i guess not for a 50 dollar case uh Take the thumb screws out of the back of it. Slide them off. Put them in the case where so I don't scratch them up. Cause it does have that acrylic, that stuff scratches pretty easy. And guys, they didn't want that side panel coming off and shipping. There we go. I get a screwdriver to take that one off. And pull it back, slide it back just a little bit, and it should come right off. There we go, it came off. <coughs> All right, guys, first looks in the inside. There's your three and a half inch, two and a half inch base with the sleds. Got a box of goodies down here. We're gonna have to. Yeah, I had to pull that one out to get to it. It's just kind of laying in the bottom, but it was underneath that sled pretty good. All right, let's see what we get in the box of goodies. Uh, looks like your motherboard screws there. Yeah, uh, there looks like, uh, what we got? We got a couple extra thumb screws. Looks like some fine tooth for like your SSDs and your hard drive screws. Uh, got some standoffs, looks like. Some kind of little, oh, it's that Kenzie lock bracket right there. You can put on it, I guess. Uh, and it's got a little adapter to put your uh, the standoffs in with if you need that. 
And what else is in the box? And we got some zip ties. Not very many, but there's a few there to help you with your cable management when you get done with it. And that's what's in the box. Alright, what else do we got here? Let's look at the front panel connector, see what we got on it, which should be USB 3, should be USB 2, audio and headphones, and your power switch and your reset switch, and one LED it looks like what it should have. Oh, that's it here. There, everybody knows that USB 3 cable right there. Uh, that's your front audio. That there is your hard drive activity light. Your power LED light. I oh, got a power LED light on it too, guys. It must be comboed with the uh, hard drive light. You got a reset switch and your power switch. Pretty typical layout. What's this one back here hiding? That should be your USB 2.0. Then you got your two pans. Two cables here for your fans. So I might have to use a splitter because my motherboard's only got one uh, one header on it. Um, like they said, there's no grommets. Pretty simple case, basic case. Uh, looks like they've only got one standoff installed, and that's that middle one's got that little peg on it. You'll have to install the rest of the motherboard standoffs. Looking at the back of the case from the inside. Yeah, uh, cable management may not be too bad in this case. I'd like to see a little bit more room back here for cable management. At least they do give you a hole back here for your uh, CPU cable. I like that in a $50 case anymore. Because a lot of people, they don't cut that out to save money. But I kind of like that. And it says there's a two and a, it says there's an SSD mount on this thing somewhere. But I don't, I'm not seeing it. It ain't sticking out to me. But I guess if I read the owner's manual, it'd tell me where the SSD mount is on it. Which I want to put both my drives that I've got in that, in the drive cage. That way the cable management's nice and close. Okay, guys, I guess down here is where your SSD mount, your standard SSD mount goes. Looks like it's going to be a little close to get an SSD into that. Cause I won't be using that in my build. But yeah, guys, that's kind of an overview, kind of a look at it. Um, let me get the build done up in it, and uh, I'll be back. Since I got the build done in the case, I think I'll give you a fair opinion on this case. It's the first time I ever used the case, but usually after one build, you get a pretty good feel for a case. For the $50 price point or right around there, I think they did a pretty good job with this one. You know, it's a pretty sturdy case. Like most $50 cases, it don't. it's got some downfalls to it. I don't like the air the dust filter on the bottom of it. I don't like that. I think they could do a better job with that at this price point. Uh, cable management, I'd like to see a little bit more room behind the motherboard tray for that cable management. I mean, I got mine done, but of course that was a modular power supply. So I don't have a whole lot of extra cables. But I think it ended up pretty good for what I had. Some of the plus sizes that the case has, it does come with two 120 millimeter fans. And that's a big plus, because a lot of cases... And this price point's only got one. Both of the fans is in the front of it, which I'd rather have one in the back. But you could always switch one of them front fans to the back fan if you really wanted to. But it, with two fans in the front and none in the back, you still got a positive airflow pressure to it. Which, if you've seen any of my other videos, I do recommend a positive airflow. Um, it does have the expansion slot covers that's replaceable. You know, they don't have the breakaways. Which that's nice. I 
you know, a lot of $50 cases, you can't replace them once you break them out. They're done unless you buy replacements, and hopefully they match or somewhat match. It does have the captive thumb screws in the side panels, which that's nice. You don't have to worry about losing them thumb screws while you're doing your build in. So yeah, guys, for the 50 some dollar price point, you know, it's right around $50. I think it's like $52, $53 at the time of filming, anyways. I think it's well worth the money. It's one of the better cases I've found in this price point as of right now. Um, if you think of any other cases at $50 or so that you think I'd be interested in and you'd like to see a uh, overboxing or review or build in, drop it down in the comments and uh, I'll, I'll check them out and see what I think of them. If you like what you've seen in this video, give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs down if you didn't like it. There's that comment section below. If you really liked what you saw here today, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. That way you're notified next time I put out a video. Until next time, you all have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video.